Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo... There is a public call box in the street outside the Ministry of Missile Redeployment. Into the call box, a char lady, dressed in the traditional clothes, made her way slowly and without fuss. She picked up the phone and dialed a number without reference to the telephone books. In another part of London, a phone rang. A man's hand, well kept, clean, with beautifully manicured nails, stretched out. On the third finger of the hand was a very distinctive ring, a design of entwined hearts. The man picked up the phone. Bonville. Marjorie, darling. You'll be getting a bit hot, I'm afraid. What do you mean? They're onto Sir Rodney. The security man's dead. He's confessed. Then break contact. Throw him to the walls. Exactly what I've done. Good. Better call and see me sometime. Have to work out another plan. Meanwhile, you better shed that Charlie de image, hadn't you? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. fabric conditioner that not only softens, but actually rinses out hardness, rinses in a new kind of softness. Comfort leaves your wash refreshingly young and bouncy again. Just a little comfort in the final rinse gives a lot of comfort to your wash. John Steed and Emma Peel realize that the security leak at the Ministry is no game, but the score remains. Love all. Mother knew that there was a security leak at the Missile Redeployment Department. Everyone in the department had been carefully checked and screened, but so far nothing had been discovered. Things came to a head when Metcalf, a security man, had been found dead. Sir Rodney Kellogg, head of the department, had confessed to the killing, claiming that he'd found him going through private papers, and in the subsequent struggle, Sir Rodney's gun had gone off. John Steed wasn't convinced by the story. He was sure Sir Rodney was covering up for someone else. He had Sir Rodney put under house arrest, pending a full inquiry. That night, Sir Rodney paced the floor of his office, he called to the guard at the door. A oh, guard? Guard, uh, uh, I wonder if it would be possible for me to see the personnel file. Uh, it's in Mr. Tate's office. Well, Sir Rodney, I, uh, I don't know. I mean... Oh, now, look here, man. I, I know you're only doing a job guarding me like this, but I can't be expected to relax. I, I might as well do a little work, too. Now, come along. Well, uh, well, I suppose it's all right. Don't see why not. I'll get it for you. The guard went away, and Sir Rodney continued his pacing. Leaving the door open, the guard returned. Uh, there you are, sir. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. The guard closed the door and said to the other guard on duty, You know, there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. Uh, that's Shakespeare, isn't it? Yeah, King Lear. Just before he fights Macduff and goes mad. I can't be any more mad than Sir Rodney. Bonkers, if you ask me. Had the two guards seen Sir Rodney at that point, they would have been sure of the fact. For Sir Rodney, having searched the personnel file, had found what he was looking for. Yeah, domestic, 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 domestic. Uh, uh, here we are. Martha. Martha Roberts, four Chester Place. Got it. Oh, my beloved. Now I've found your address. 
Wild horses can't keep you from me now. So saying, Sir Rodney flung the file down on the desk and, running the length of the room, jumped through the plate glass window. The two guards burst into the room. Blimey! He went through the window! Uh, Twenty foot drop! He's got away! Look, there he goes! <laughs> Mother's headquarters, white wine was still the order of the day. Or night. Mm, splendid. Beautiful, Gerald. So, you don't think Sir Roddy killed Nessar, Steed? I'm certain that he didn't. Look at this. Steed produced the pearl handled revolver. He told me he had a firearms permit. Yeah, and you checked. Nothing registered in his name. Then who was he carrying up for? Whoever gave him the gun, presumably. Hmm. Small pearl handle. Hmm, suggest. A woman? Yes, but not necessarily. Plenty of men used to carry these in the early 19th century. Not that I hope we have to go back quite that far. Mother? Yes? What? Well, you're a couple of blithering fatheads. Don't tell me. So Rodney's escaped? Right. Jumped through a window 20 feet from the ground. Now, what would make a, an aged civil servant do that? Madness? Desperation? Or love? Mrs. Peel, I have never known you so incurably romantic or so unhelpful. I'm sorry, I can't help it. And I can't help being thirsty. Open another bottle of wine. Sir Rodney made a clean getaway in his roles. He drove straight to number four, Chester Place. Parked outside, ran nimbly up the steps and rang the doorbell. Some little while later, the door opened. Martha stood in the doorway, but not as the grubby char lady. She looked young and beautiful. She showed no sign of recognizing Sir Rodney. In a cultivated voice, she said, Yes? Uh, I, I, I was looking for Martha Roberts. Oh, you mean my aunt? Uh, she's in the bath. Can I give her a message? Well, not really. It's personal. Uh, what name shall I say? Well, just tell her it's, uh, uh, Rodders. Rodders? Yes, that's right, uh, Rodders. She'll know who that is, will she? Oh, yes, yes, uh, yes, indeed she will. Right. I'm afraid I can't ask you in because we're in such a mess. Auntie never receives visitors until she's had a chance to tidy up. Just wait, will you? Oh, of course, of course. Forever, if necessary. They say there's no fool like an old fool. Here's proof, all right. Inside the house, Martha made another telephone call. Martha here. The Rodney's got away from the ministry. He's waiting outside. What do I do? You will go to him. Can't have him blabbing everything. Keep him waiting for ten minutes, then uh, I'll be over and uh, waiting in the street. But what do I do? Dress yourself in your child's outfit. Meet him. Get him to drive you to some secluded spot. In the car, perhaps. Yes, and... Dispose of him. Don't worry, Martha. I shall not be far away. It has to be done. and Emma Peel were doing a routine check on Sir Rodney's office. The guard was slightly more than crestfallen. Well, how are we to believe that any one of Sir Rodney's age would undertake such an escape? I mean, would you like that dump, Mr. Steed? <sighs> Not through a closed window. The point is, why not open it and shin down a drain pipe sooner than take the chance of injuring oneself? That doesn't make sense. People in love never do, as I've been trying to tell Mother. You say he asked for this file? Oh, that's right, a personnel file. Don't ask me why. If you knew, it might help. Well, I didn't see any harm in it, so I went and fetched it. You haven't touched anything in here? Oh, no, Mr. Steed, not a thing. We've left everything as we found it. The personnel file closed on the table. As though flung down hurriedly. He found something he was looking for. But what? Or whom? Yeah. If only we knew what sort of personnel he was looking for. All right, guard, I'll put in a good word for you. Night. <laughs> Rodney waited in Chester Street for ten minutes. During that time, a sports car drew up across the road. The hand that steered the wheel had a distinctive ring on one finger. Bromfield had arrived. He watched as the door to number four opened. Martha, as a charlady, came out. In her cockney voice, she said, Oh, Rodgers, 
But they let you go. Oh, Martha, my darling, I I escaped. Escaped? Oh, you shouldn't have done that. Well, I know, but I, I just had to see you again. You must go back immediately. Well, out of the question. Every minute away from you is... I've been looking to... for you. You don't want to bring me into this, do you? Ah, oh, they'll never find us, my love. We'll, we'll disappear together somewhere far away where we can be safe. Martha, looking over her shoulder, saw the sports car and said... All right, Rodney, I'll go with you. Take me wherever you like. Oh, my darling. Oh, made me so happy. You'll never regret this, I, I promise you. No, but you might. Never, never, I swear it. Come on. Sir Rodney took Martha by the hand and led her to the rolls. Seconds later, they were purring their way towards the park, followed by the sports car. At a convenient spot, Martha said, Pull up at the end of this street, please, Rodney. Yes, but we have much time. Please do as I say, darling. I want to ask you something. Oh, very well, dearest. Uh, anything you say. Kiss me, Rodney. Of course, my love. But don't you... No, but... I want you to make love to me. I want to be sure you do. Oh, you, you know I do, my darling. And you'll never leave me? Never, never. Martha opened her handbag and withdrew another pearl-handled revolver. Promise? I promise. Oh, what a pity. Minutes later, Martha joined Bromfield in the sports car. Sorry, darling. There was no other way. Never mind. There are plenty more fish in the sea, all ready for catching. And flying. like around the sink. That's the sort of dirt that's hardest to shift if you don't have Vim 99. Only Vim has deep cleaning bleach to get right down into cracks and deep set stains, leaving everything really clean and germ-free. For total cleanness you can trust, use Vim. Vim 99, the strong one. No dirt can stand up to the cleaning power of cold water Omo. Mrs. Whelan had to wash greasy overalls. And I thought, oh, well, I won't worry. I'll stick it into cold water Omo. And sure enough, every bit of grease is up. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. Oh, no.